Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, January 27th of 2019. It is 6.25 a.m. in the morning. And uh, just a little bit of an update. Uh, yesterday, my daughter, she's about 50 years, going to be 50 years of age here before long. I'm 78 years of age. She took me to, like I said, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, took me to Oklahoma, across the border to Oklahoma, to uh, the casino. She had some coupons. She had a coupon for a buffet. Let's see. I think I have. Where is that? Uh, here it is. It was a buffet. This was my first plate. The second plate I did better. They put, got some turkey with, on the second plate. Best turkey I've ever had. Their food was excellent. But she had a coupon for two free meals. That's not good when casinos give you. That means you spend a lot of money gambling. But uh, So we had this, and we gambled. And, uh, you know, none of us... Uh, you know, did well. I mean, you know, you play a while and you get close to getting a jackpot and all that kind of stuff. But uh, so uh, they were, it was packed. It was, see, that would have been um, Saturday because today's Sunday, January 27th. Um, so we had fun, but it was, it was packed because they were giving away, they were having drawings every 30 minutes or every hour. And on at midnight on uh, Friday night and Saturday night, I guess, we left before midnight, Saturday night drawing. Uh, they were giving away, I think, how much was it? $15,000 or I can't remember. It was a large sum of money. So... Uh, Let's see, take this off tracking here. So, um, so we did that and the uh, strike, or a strike, the uh, government shutdown is over. Uh, Donald Trump uh, says that if he doesn't get his wall in three weeks, he's going to uh, shut the government down again. And uh, the experts, Democrats and Republicans, say no, he uh, has learned his lesson uh, so that he won't be shutting the government down. And he may uh, pull the thing of... Uh, national emergency, but I personally don't think he's going to try that because that actually would be, I think the courts would rule against him saying that it is not a national emergency and that he can't just decide that uh, something is a national emergency in order to take away the powers of the uh, House of Representatives who decides on the budgeting well, along with the Senate, the Congress, that uh, Congress was given the purse strings by the Founding Fathers. It was actually intended that our legislature, our Congress, uh, was to be the, you know, well, we're, we have three co-equal uh, branches of government. We have the executive branch headed by the president. We have the legislature with a uh, Senate and a House and then you had the judicial system. They were intended to be equaled and balanced and to check and balance on each other. The president has become, over the years, the dominant and powerful figure. Uh, this uh, unprecedented, unprecedented uh, power grab by the president would be, I think, very unwise. I think the legislature would... Uh, slap him down for it, and if 
if I were Congress, I'd just let him know. Of course, they won't because, you know, if you have a Democratic House, but you have a Republican-controlled Senate. But what I would do if I were the legislature is I would just say, uh, Mr. President, if you uh, attempt to declare a national emergency so you can take money from the military budget and build a wall, uh, we will move to remove you. We will impeach you. And But the Republicans would have to, you know, be in on that too, which they would never do. But what they should do is just say, you know, if you attempt to, uh, you know, you swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, and if you uh, attempt to uh, usurp the power of the legislative, you know, legislative branch, we will remove you from office. That would be, you know, that would be what they should do. You know, you swore an oath to protect, defend the Constitution, and here you're trying to take powers away from the legislative, uh, you know, legislature, and uh, but that, you know, because the Republicans are not going to, they're going to, a lot of, enough of them are going to stand by their man, so. But I don't think, you know, Trump lost this round, and I don't think he has, uh, I don't think he wants to go back to, but like I mentioned, in a, I don't want to get into politics. Oh, we already got into politics, didn't I? Well, pay no attention. I think, too, that if they need to pass a constitutional amendment or whatever they, it should be that, you know, the legislature, you know, comes up with a budget and they pass a budget. And then, of course, they send it to the president or whatever. But if they, if the legislature and the president, they should have to, they shouldn't do these continuing, what they do is a continuing resolution. They don't do it for a year. They're supposed to, but it's become a, a little plaything. So everybody has their little piece of the pie and a little control or whatever. And what they do is they pass it for a X amount of time, a few months or a few weeks or whatever, they pass it. And then the other side says, well, I'm not going to, you know, unless you do this, unless you do that or whatever. And what the American people should demand is, you know, draw up the budget, budget pass the budget, you know, and send it on to the president. And, you know, if you don't, then, I mean, the, but, you know, you have to follow the Constitution or whatever, but they should have to pass a budget, and uh, they shouldn't be allowed to do this. There again, it should be like a, if something comes up, some type of an emergency. Okay, well, we're just doing it because of a emergency, a real emergency, a grave national emergency. You know, we're passing this for two months, and then we'll finish off this or but it, they should have to they should be required to fund the government if not you know get the hell out of government so it just so uh, what else is going on uh i'm sorry i brought up politics nobody wants to hear about it in the united states anymore i got a feeling in the uh oh prince philip Sent an I didn't hear about this happening, but he had a car accident, and uh, I didn't think he was capable of driving. Well, maybe he's not capable of driving. How old is he, anyway? Police in Norfolk, England, say they had a word with one of the... Yeah, he was out driving, and I guess there was a crash. Uh, he ended up a lady broke her arm, and... Uh, Apparently, he um, was pulled, I think, from the vehicle that he was in, bloodied or whatever. <clears throat> I did not hear about this. Um, he sent a letter of apology or whatever. So uh, the royals have something to do. Uh, they love to drive, don't they? Of course, they have gigantic estates, you know, and They, because member of the queen, you know, uh, has driven be before and have been stories about that. Uh, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm 87. 
uh, he shouldn't be driving. <laughs> He's 97. I'm 87. I think I'm going to be 80. Wait a minute. No. I'm 70. I was born in 1941. Okay, I'm 78. I think I'll be 78 in March. Anyway, he is... Where did I see that? 97 or something? He shouldn't be driving. I know there's 97. Uh, they like to be out driving or something. I'm sorry, you know. I know, you know, they're royalty. I take their damn keys away from them. Although, it looks like to me, the queen could probably, she probably wouldn't have had the accident. I guess there's some was some criticism uh, that he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. And uh, I think there was some... Uh, the incident dominated British media and led to the public debate about whether people over a certain age should have to retake their driving test. Of course, I'm sure he probably doesn't have a driver's license. Uh, oh, it says here, Okay, while the Queen is not required to hold a driving license, uh, Philip is. And, uh, okay. Man, that'd be kind of, you know, you, the Queen doesn't have to do this, and Philip does, and uh, not only does he have to walk behind her or whatever, that's, So, uh, what else happened? It's interesting, you know, here's CNN, and you can look, you know, here's uh, the White House, uh, the, uh, this type of information, you know, or we can go to politics order, click on politics here and go there. Roger Stone, uh, most, most Americans believe that the Mueller, Mueller investigation is justified, uh, so forth and so on. Okay, um, here's a conservative. Now, of course, they're not a news, they're, but they are political. So this should be the political thing. So redstate.com is there, and uh, here they're attacking... Uh, this Indian who was at the mall and with the drum or whatever. They're still attacking. They've been attacking him from day one. Uh, going on about uh, Gillette ran some type of a commercial. I didn't even pay any attention to it. And I think it was aimed at being supportive of women or something. And they're, they're going off on that, you know. And this article here, I haven't looked at it. Uh, because this site is not not dependable about stuff, but uh, this uh, here is uh, a lesbian couple identifying as a straight couple prepares to transition their five-year-old son into a daughter. That has been running for, I think, weeks here or whatever. And... Uh, And uh, Melania Trump, uh, two newspapers, I guess, there recently. I guess she won $2 million in a uh, lawsuit against a, I'm not sure, British, uh, English, British, or UK, which I guess, it, I think it's in, I don't know. Anyway, she won a lawsuit against a newspaper over there that said some things about her in the past. And uh, I'm not sure if she's getting more money from this or whether this was like the newspaper said, oops, sorry, we, we apologize and uh, we're going to, you know, what do you want or whatever. So it looks like uh, she sticks up for her, for herself. But of course, uh, you know, she has the money too takes money to sue. I mean, you have to usually have to have money to sue. Uh, uh, 
here they're saying, oh, no, you know, Trump hasn't colluded with the Russians. Uh, Roger Stone, uh, you know, did. But if uh, he did, well, you know, yeah, this is not a news site. Well, here's something that's surprising. Uh, of course, I guess if you, if I clicked on it, they would blame Obama for it or something rather, but a prominent religious conversion therapist comes out as gay. I'm not sure if that's outside the United States or whatever, but you have uh, born-again Christians or religious people here who think that uh, somebody who's gay, that they can they kind of forcibly, especially if it's a kid, you know, if parents have some kid who's under uh, the legal age of, uh, you know, where they can be on their own, we can, we'll ship them off to some type of a camp where they are uh, denied food and they do, do all kinds of things to them to uh, uh, turn them from being gay to being God-loving, you know, straight or whatever, which I'm sure does not work, you know, never works, except you probably do have some kids that say, can I have a Hershey's candy bar? I'll praise Jesus, you know. So anyway, you have, I've seen this type of story before where, uh, uh, let's go ahead and click on this. A prominent religious uh, conversion therapist comes out as gay. Uh, he ran a full-time practice in New Jersey with an active roster of about 50 clients. And uh, a program called People Can Change. So anyway, yeah, I'm sure usually for, for something like this, if you read down, they'll blame somehow the Democratic liberal, you know, it's all that's their all their fault. So. Um, So what else is going on? Oh, I had uh, going to the casino the other day. Yesterday was, wasn't it? I had to visit. The place was packed because of this money giveaway thing. And uh, the bathroom, and I have an enlarged prostate and whatever, and I had to go to the bathroom. We were only there for a few hours. I had to go there, go to the restroom about three times or whatever, and uh, I'm going less and less. I know I went a few days ago, but um, I didn't want my daughter to go there alone, so, but uh, I'm not going to try not to have to go again because I have to go a lot when I'm there. Uh... I have, when I talked to the other day, I had my 4K monitor, but not in 4K mode. And I had my extra wide monitor. And I've gone back to having the uh, Asus 1920 by 1080 monitor here. And I have my 4K monitor here, but I have it in uh, 1920 by 1080. So I have two of them here. The wide monitor just... Uh, you know, there's a lot of desk space, as you can see. Well, of course, you don't have... But do we have another view? No, we don't have. Um, so I'm doing this today, or in the last couple of days, uh, doing that. Um, I've been trying to figure out, too, why I am so tired. The cardiologist uh, I see once a year... He says there's no reason for me. To, I mean, I am exhausted 24-7. And I'm now thinking because my ex-wife, who's also type 2 diabetic, she was and is on a uh, diabetic medication. And they, uh, it's not working very well for her, so her doctor put her on the same, uh, added the uh, one that... Uh, I'm taking Metaforum, 
I think that's it. It's very common. It's like the number one. And uh, she looked up, and one of the bad side effects is exhaustion. And so then I was trying to figure out, hey, when did, and I can't figure out, when did they put me on? And I'm wondering if uh, maybe the reason I'm totally exhausted, and I've I've told that to my regular doctor too, that I see, you know, the cardiologist just, looks at the data from my pacemaker and says, uh, no, there's no reason for you to be exhausted. Everything is working, you know, great. Your heart's doing perfect, you know. And, uh, so I'm wondering if it's that, uh, might be, I wish I could, wish I'd paid attention. You know, did I start that and then uh, become tired and exhausted all the time, so tired that I just can't do anything except uh, wipe my nose all the time. Um, so I wonder if that is the cause of my exhaustion. When I was in uh, Florida, uh, a few years ago, for five, well, in Miami for five years, I was put on a cholesterol medication. And um, put on this cholesterol medication, and I really wasn't paying much attention. I mean, I put on it okay, and then all of a sudden, I just felt like every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every muscle in my body hurt, just like somebody had taken a baseball bat and just hit me everywhere that they could hit me. And so that went on for, I don't know, six months or a year or something like that. And I thought, well, okay, old age is finally, you know, finally hit. And this is what it's like to be old. And uh, I was thinking, well, I, you know, if the Grim Reaper is coming for me, well, I'm going to welcome him with, you know, because this is terrible to feel like this, just hurting all over your body all the time. I thought, but this is old age. And then I got to thinking, wait a minute. And uh, as you can see, I'm not very... I don't pay a lot of attention to myself or whatever, you know. Not a very good patient when it comes to, you know, Mr. Howard, how are you doing since you're, you know, last, uh, everything's fine, you know. Or if I do go to the doctor and there's some kind of a problem, maybe there's two or three problems, I just tell him one, you know. But um, anyway, I got to thinking, and then I looked it up. The medication up and it said that people feel like that every muscle in their body hurts and and that whatever and I went to the doctor and he said oh, oh yeah that's a side effect or whatever so I'll put you on a different you know cholesterol and I said no and he says well I can put you on something I said no you know no cholesterol medication so Maybe that's it, because a few years ago, I, I was able to, I, I was, I could walk down to the bank, I could walk, well, now I'm so weak and tired and uh, whatever that uh, I can't walk over to the mailbox here, and uh, one thing, though, my, my uh, which is a separate story, my arthritis is hurting now all the time. The naproxen here that I take, I, I was very rarely taking it because my arthritis would hurt, but I just don't want to be taking, you know, medications or whatever. I'm to the point now where I think I should just be taking the naproxen every day 
because I hurt uh, all the time with the naprox or with the arthritis. As I told you before, I, I, I for years until Delta, until just a few years ago, I couldn't swallow a pill. I, uh, I'm over that now. Oh, we got our new ice machine. It looks pretty much identical. I think the same company in China probably, you know, they make them a different color or <laughs> maybe make a few, but the same inner workings, the same. It looks the very same. So the last one lasted a year, and this one was about $99, and we got it the other day, and it looks like it works. It works great. Kind of amazing. You know, it's only you saw it in the video about like that. And you plug it in, and uh, almost immediately it starts making a little bit of ice. And before long, it, your little ice tray there is, you know, filled with ice cubes. Uh, it's kind of amazing how I don't understand the chemistry or the... Uh, that's over my pay grade, above my pay grade, I guess we're supposed to say. Okay, um, what else is going on here? Um, I, okay, but, oh, you see this thing back here? This is not what you think it is. Uh, See if I can zoom in on that. Whoops, wait, here's how you... Okay, well, this is not what you think it is up here. Okay, you're not seeing... No, I think I changed it. I think I changed the uh, setting here where you can now... This is a... Uh, I've never used it, but I finally hooked it up, charged it up. I haven't... It's a ultrasonic... Uh... Thing for going over your skin and doing something or other and uh, that's what it is it's not get your mind out of the gutter or whatever although there's nothing wrong with it uh, okay uh, I'll put some links below. Please, uh, please use them. Uh, please give a thumbs up. Uh, especially though, please. Uh, let me sh let me wait a minute here. Let me kill this. My God. Here's my most recent uh, videos. Uh, today is the 27th on the 23rd, so it's been a few days. This is my last video, 85 views. Uh, let me move this over a little bit here. Well, it didn't help, did it? No? Okay. I have to make the video smaller here. Okay, five likes. Uh, this video here has 46 views. This video here has 111. This has 131. This one down here has 603. Obama's 10-foot wall. Yes. I'm not good also at writing titles and also not good at tags. There is software, though, that helps you pick out tags and that kind of stuff. I just make a video and I upload it. And I do need, I keep telling you I'm going to do it, I do need to uh, not just record the video and I need to go in and do some of the editing. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Okay. Bye-bye.